This is Red Skelton. Lucille Ball. George Tobias. The Gulf Screen Guild Theater. <laughs> Presenting tonight, Damon Runyon's comedy, Tight Shoes. And here is your host, the director of the star's own theater, Roger Pryor. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, the Gulf Oil Companies and your neighborhood good Gulf dealer bring to the Gulf Screen Guild Theater Radio's newest comedy sensation, Red Skelton. And starring with him, Lucille Ball and George Tobias in Universal Pictures' slap-happy comedy, Tight Shoes. We've less than a minute before our Gulf Curtain rises, so we'd like to take that brief moment to tell you about a neighbor of yours. All right, Bud Heathman? You know, folks, no one better realizes how much proper car service at the proper time means to you than the man I'm speaking for now, the good Gulf dealer right in your own neighborhood. In his business, he sees what happens to cars whose owners put off having them serviced. He knows what makes them start wasting oil and gas, knows why cars wear out too quickly. Most important to you, the Gulf man knows how to prevent much excessive and premature wear with his car saver services. When he flushes out the dirty, worn oil from your crankcase and refills it, when he replaces your gear lubricants, when he gives your car a Gulflex registered lubrication job, his training and his knowledge pay you dividends in longer car life. And, of course, you can rely on the famous Gulf products he sells, each designed to help keep your car running better longer. So tomorrow, remember, stop at the sign of the Gulf Orange Disc. Ask your neighbor, the Gulf man, about his car saver services. Remember... To care for your car, for your country. And now the curtain's about to go up on our saga of a pair of tight shoes. Our stars, Red Skelton playing Swifty Miller, Lucille Ball as Sybil, and George Tobias as Bluch. We're all ready, so Oscar Bradley, will you start the ball rolling with some suitable music? <laughs> Somewhere in America, there's the sound of marching feet. Company! Huh! All right, men. 30 minutes rest period. Make the most of it. Oh, they're killing me. Oh, my feet. Oh, I can't stand it. Show me a bayonet and I'll fall on it. What's the matter? We've come just as far as you have. Oh, my feet, they're murdering me. I feel like I'm walking on hot coals. These shoes, the right size is too small. Hey, did I hear you say tight shoes? Yeah, you sure did, brother. Well, take my word for it and get rid of them, chum. Do it now and don't hesitate. And march the rest of the way on my knees, I suppose. Regardless, do it now. Take it from a man who lost everything because of a pair of tight shoes. Uh, how come? Well, I tell you this is an illustration of why you should burn those shoes before another minute goes by. But before I do, give me a cigarette, will you, soldier? Yeah. Thanks a lot. Now, at one time, I'm a prosperous, respected citizen who's the biggest gambler in town. Now, on this particular day I'm mentioning, I'm in my warehouse looking over a new shipment of slot machines. Hmm. Two lemons and an egg. <laughs> Boss, why do you play them machines? You know they're crooked. Quiet, blood. Yeah. Two eggs and a lemon. Well, I'll try one more. That does it. Hand me that axe. What you got that time, boss? Two eggs and a jap. <laughs> hey, don't these things ever pay off? You know they don't, boss. That's how we make our living. Yeah, we'll fix up one that does pay off. I gotta have some fun out of life. But gee, boss, they're your machines. All you get back is your own money. Can't you leave no illusions, Butch? Okay, boss, okay. We'll fix it up. Relax. We better get started for the races. Yeah, all right, all right. Hey, but there's one thing we got to do before we go to the races. What's that? We got to buy a shoe store. A shoe store? Yeah. I got to get a shoe store. I got it all figured out. Now, the district attorney's making things hot. All the gambling dives are closed. Am I right? You're always right, boss. There's only one ward we can still operate in. Council? Council? Councilman Honest John Phoebe. You boss. beat me to it. <laughs> Correct. Now, Honest John is still friendly because Honest John likes the thousand feet I give him every month. So with things being in that condition, what we got to do is concentrate on Honest John's ward. Boss, you're a wonder. Say, boss. Yeah? 
Why do they call him Honest John? Because he only steals retreads. <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, now, like I'm saying, we open up the new place tonight. I already got it picked out. In the front, we sell shoes, and in the back, we sell game of chance. We better get started. Yeah, wait a minute. I'm gonna try this once more. More lemons. I ain't going to no race. My luck's no good today. Look, boss, I fixed those machines myself. It's not got nothing to do with luck. Sometimes they gotta pay off. Now, these machines, nobody can win. Look, boss, I'll put in a quarter myself. Now, what? Yeah. How'd that happen? Yeah. I guess I have to give that left screw a couple more times. Yeah, I guess you better. You reach for that jackpot and your hand will never make a return trip. <laughs> now get out of here. You only given me $10,000 for my shoe store. Yeah, that's right. I give you this $10,000 bill. A $10,000 bill? Yeah. I didn't know the government was printing them. Hmm? You mean they're printing them, too? <laughs> well, now, here's the cash. You just say the word, and I'll dump it in your lap. What will happen if I want the sale? Oh, wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll sell. Yeah, fine. Now, you understand you keep on working for me. I'll pay you $50 a week. Only $50? Yeah, I'll give you $50 and all the shoes you can eat. <laughs> well, boss, now we own a shoe store. Yeah, you know, and speaking of shoes, I could do me with a new pair. Hey, a meal fly. Get somebody to sell me some shoes. I'll get our best salesman, Jimmy. Yeah. He's a college man. Uh, Jimmy. Yes, Mr. Malfi. Show this gentleman the best shoes in the house, sir. It's the new boss. Yes, sir. Uh, sit right down here, sir. Okay. Hey, boss. We better get started. Sybil will tell you heart out if we keep her waiting any longer. I said I gotta buy shoes. Now, shut up. Uh, size ten and a half. Okay. What's that? Oh, I said uh, size ten and a half, sir. That's what your feet measure. Is this guy trying to insult me? I never wore over a nine in my life. I got a dainty feet. Well, you measure ten and a half, sir. I don't care. I want size nines. They won't fit you. Oh, yes, they will. Just fold my toes under. <laughs> I just measured, sir, and, and... Get me some size nines, bub. <laughs> yes, sir. My father had big feet once. <laughs> yeah, what size did your father take? Uh, I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, they just skinned a cow and put some buttons on it. <laughs> There. Oh, there. quit shoving, will you? Oh, just a little more, and we'll have this shoe on, sir. Oh. Hey, did you ever sell girdles? <laughs> uh, we nearly got it on. Yeah, you'd better tuck the ankle in a little more, neat. Uh, uh, oh, oh, there we are, sir. Yeah. As snug a pair of shoes as I've ever fitted. Yeah. Aren't they nice looking? I could answer that, but it would only lead to bloodshed. <laughs> It took you long enough. Come on, Butch. Let's get to the races. We've got to pick up Sybil. You know, I don't like that clerk. He looks to me like he belongs to a bad element. He's a college man. A college man? Yeah. That does it. I'll never buy another magazine as long as I live. <laughs> I'm sorry I was late, Sybil. But my feet are killing me. They'll be worse than that killing you if I miss the first race. Oh, now, don't talk like that, sweet pea. Guess what I got for you today. I went down and got you. Oh, not a nasty old diamond bracelet. Yeah. But, of course, you won't be able to wear it in public for a while. Why not? Well, I got it out of a hot iron claw machine. <laughs> oh, Swifty, sometimes you make me wonder what I see in you. Yeah, I wonder myself. Maybe it's my clothes. For instance, how you like my victory suit, huh? How do you like it? What victory was it, Bull Run? <laughs> oh, sweet pea, you know I'm crazy about you. I'd do anything for you. Anything? Sure, just say the word and I'll tear up my autographed picture of Roger Pryor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Here I am, the biggest star on Broadway, and I run around with a slug like you. Oh, I'm off my onion for you, sweet pea. Or maybe it's only gas pushing up around me heart. <laughs> Uh, don't kid me. It's just my shape. Nah, don't you kid me. Shape ain't everything in life. My mama done told me. <laughs> hey, Swifty, you better drive slower. We don't want to have any trouble with the cops. No, I they think they still sort me for throwing that body in that vacant lot. 
Well, they're right. You shouldn't have done it. Yeah, I shouldn't have. I know. But it was dark. I didn't see that no dumping sign. <laughs> the trouble with me is I can't forget I used to be in burlesque. Yeah. I got used to guys like you, and I can't get over it. <laughs> give me a kiss, Swifty. Now, let's stop and get a hamburger. Oh, no. Come on. Give me a kiss. All right. Well? Let's stop and get a hamburger. <laughs> That makes six losers in a row, boss. I thought you said even the horses were betting on your last one, Swifty. All right, all right. So I'm not lucky. Oh, boy, my feet are murdering me. Well, wait till the next race. That's where we make our killing. Do tell. Yeah, I got it all fixed. We go the whole way on Palomar. Now get down and put up our bet, Butch. He's number... What's the matter? Number seven. Look at the name of number seven. Let's see. Feet first. What a hunch. I've been waiting for a break like this for years. You're not going to switch. What's been killing me all afternoon? What's been talking to me, talking to me, and talking to me? The feet. That's it. Feet first. But, boss, you already spent ten grand to fix the race of that Palomar wins. But look at the odds on feet first. Ninety to one. (laughs) But he can't win, boss. I fixed it already. With your throw, I fixed it. This is bigger than a fixed race. This is the hunch of a century. Just think of what I can do with all that dough. I can buy myself a little vine-covered saloon on Main Street and settle down. <laughs> Come on, Butch. Put every cent on feet first. It's a hunch from heaven. What for? Come on, get going, will you? I can't be wrong this time. Borrow all the Mizuma you can. Put every nickel on them. Hey, make a tour of the phone booth. See what you can get on Sybil's jewelry. To... See what you can get on Sybil. <laughs> now hurry up. Get going. <laughs> Seventh race, Palomar first, Laughing Water second, and Grover third. Pete first, the horse that collapsed at the first turn had to be destroyed because of old age. <laughs> yeah, just wait till I get my hands on that shoe salesman. I'll pull his tongues out. <laughs> we couldn't win, boss. But you had it fixed. If I hear another word out of you, I'll take you for a ride. In your car, of course. <laughs> okay, boss, okay. Wait till I get my hands on that guy. Listen, never mind about that. What about my jewelry? I'm I can't sorry. go around on my bare wrist. I know, but kid, you lost everything on the seventh race. I did, huh? Yeah, I'm awful. Now, don't look at me like that, Sybil. Sybil! No, not your feet, Sybil! Oh, you broke my widow toe, you! <laughs> <laughs> Things being the way they are, Sonny, I'd pull out and sell my shoes someplace else for a while if I was you. But this is silly. He asked for that size. I, I tried to tell him they were too small. What happened? Well, I'll give it to you fast. He bet $50,000 on an egg called Feet First to come in head first, but it was dead first and carried out Feet First. <laughs> but I can't run away. Oh, don't run. Catch a train. Fly. Absolutely not. It's time someone showed the gangster element that decent citizens have some rights. Okay, okay, you show them. You'll be the best like stiff in the morgue. It was very sweet of you to warn me. Well, I don't have any reason to want to see you dead. You're kind of cute. I am? My, where'd you get those nice, wide shoulders? I am? (laughs) Before we get into a rut, why don't you take me to dinner? I am. Quite an idea, Swifty. Running a gambling joint behind a shoe store. Yeah. Hey, Swifty, Morgan over there wants 500 on the cuff. What'll I do? See how far you can throw him. Okay. Uh, say, I thought Bluch was gonna be here to help with the blackjack game. No, he's over to a political rally with Councilman Beebe. I sent him over to look the crowd over and a few pockets. Uh, is Bluch a pickpocket? Yeah, he couldn't make enough money just being a beaten Tom. Hey, boss! Hey, boss! Yeah. Hey, boss, get out of here, boss. Bluch, what's the matter? Disaster's broken loose, boss. There's a mob coming for you. That shoe sale. Well, what happened? Well, Honest John is standing up there giving the crowd the corn about good government. Yes. When up jumps this shoe salesman. Yes. He says that Honest John is a crook watching cahoots with hoodlums like you. Hoodlums like you? What do you know about that? Oh, hoodlums. How do you like that? 
I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah, I think he called you that, too. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, boss, the mob is here. Take it easy there. Don't knock that door. Hey, you see, boss? You see what I tell you? Honest John tells you he has the cleanest district in town. Well, just take a look around. You wait till I get my hands on that college guy. Let me through there, pup. Just one poke, that's all I ask. And here, here's the biggest man of them all, folks. Here's the man who corrupts your city officials, Swifty Miller. Well, brother, you asked for it. You wrecked my joint, you fool around with my girl, and now you're going to get it. Come on, put up your mitts. Come on, put up your mitts. Well, why didn't somebody tell me to put up my mitts? <laughs> And so the Gulf Theater curtain falls on the first act of Tight Shoes. In just a moment, we'll find out whether or not Swifty Miller ever got up from the floor. Meanwhile, let's find out what Mr. Heaston has on his mind. Friends, next time you stop at your good golf dealers, have him fill your crankcase with Gulf Pride, the improved motor oil so long known as the world's finest. And once you've tried Gulf Pride, we sincerely believe you'll continue to use it, no matter how much or how little you've been accustomed to paying for oil. You see... Gulf Pride now has an extraordinary resistance to the destructive effect of high running temperatures developed by modern engines. It fights the formation of corrosive acids and effectively combats the oxidation which causes lesser oils to break down so quickly. And Gulf Pride is highly resistant to the formation of hard carbon deposits and engine varnish. Designed to meet the exacting requirements of the latest motors, Gulf Pride assures thorough protection to any motor. So to give your motor really top flight protection, Stop at your good golf dealers and fill up with Gulf Pride motor oil. And when you drive, don't forget that gas and oil are ammunition. Use them wisely. And now the second act of Damon Runyon's story, Tight Shoes. Adapted for the Gulf Screen Guild Theater by William Bowers with comedy sequences by Jack Douglas and Sam Perrin. Our stars, Red Skelton, Lucille Ball, and George Tobias. Somewhere in America, a group of soldiers resting by the side of a dusty road. Swifty Miller's relating the history of a pair of tight shoes. So there I am with the work of ten years crashing over my ears. This mob wrecks my joint, the shoe salesman wrecks my jaw. What happened after that? Well, this shoe salesman becomes somewhat of a public figure. I'm startled out of my wits one day when I wake up to find that he's running for city council against my good friend and candidate, Honest John Beebe. But the biggest shock comes a couple of weeks later when I decide to attend one of this guy's political rallies to see what he's got on the board. I don't see what we're doing here, boss. He ain't got a chance to corner the longshoreman's vote. Think of all the free beer we give them at Honest John's rally. Yeah, maybe he's got something to give them, too. That's what we're here to find out. Now, shut up. I think they're going to start now. Quiet, please. Quiet. Quiet, please. Now, before we actually begin tonight, we're going to have a little bit of entertainment. You fellows all remember Sybil Anderson. <laughs> well, you all remember that before Sybil became the brightest star on Broadway, she used to perform a little specialty dance down here at the Bijou Burlesque. <laughs> well, well, Sybil is going to perform her specialty dance for us again tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, in the interest of good government, I give you Miss Sybil Anderson. <laughs> I can't believe it. That's Sybil. To think she'd do this to me. It's a fine thing to do in the interest of good government. I can't stand to watch Butch. Come on, we're leaving. Wait a minute, boss. I haven't seen Sybil do that specialty since she started that riot in Flatbush. Yeah, I think I'll go out and commit suicide. You can't commit suicide, boss. Yeah, I know. It wouldn't be fair to my victory garden. <laughs> hey, uh, what do you suppose she's doing in there? Are you kidding, boss? Uh, I... I can't stand it. Take a look through the door and see what's happening, will you? My, oh, my, oh, my. What is it? She's got a sign on, boss. Vote for Jimmy Finley, the longshoreman's friend. How do you like that? She's wearing another sign on the back of her dress. Yeah, what does that say? It says, goodbye, Mama, I'm off to Yokohama. 
Oh, boy! Yeah, what, what's she doing? What's she doing, huh? What's she doing? I don't know. All I can tell you, boss, is that I think she just won the election. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you the latest election returns. With the incomplete reports from 28 states in, Roosevelt is leading Wilkie by... Yeah, we know that. How's B.B. doing? Oh, in the local elections, the hottest contest is between incumbent John B.B. and the reform candidate James Finley. Half an hour ago, John B.B. conceded defeat. Shut that up, will you? How do you like that? So, dear John, finally give up. <laughs> it's no use, boss. We all knew he was sunk the minute Sybil started taking things off. Oh, uh, how could Sybil do this to me? Well, what are we going to do now, boss? You lost all our money. Yeah, I know. We're flat. Yeah. I'll think of something, though. Hey, wait a minute. We still got a business. But with Honest John out, they'll toss a net over us. I ain't talking about the racket. Have you forgotten? We still own a shoe store. I said I wanted an open-toed sandal. But believe me, madam, these high-button shoes is the latest rage. Look, real pearl buttons. Sure, madam, them is real quality. Yeah. I want open-toed sandals. Well, we don't carry them. You know, there are so few people with open toes. <laughs> Will you please give me what I want? Yeah. Maybe you better give them to her, boss. Uh, she'll take what she gets and like it. I want a pair of open-toed sandals. Open-toed sandals. Open-toed sandals. What are you, a fresh air fiend or something? I want open Listen, you take these high-button shoes or I'll cram them down your throat. Well, really? I don't... I don't think you used the right approach, boss. Uh, how can I keep my mind on my work when I read in the paper that Sybil's gonna marry that guy? The fact it ain't very loyal of her, boss. After all the things he's done to you. Mm. What are you doing, boss? I'll fix that guy. I'll fix him just like he fixed me. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna send him a wedding present. With the compliments of my shoe store. Hey, Blutch, you run out and find out what size shoes the new councilman wears. How am I gonna do that? I don't care how you do it, but do it. Hey, wait a minute. Go break in his house. Steal every pair of shoes the guy owns. But, boss, that's dishonest. Yeah. Anyway, what could that do? Plenty. I'm going to send him a pair of shoes that's so tight, he'll have to unlace them to swallow. <laughs> well, there's no use being so crabby about everything. Who's crabby? I tell you, my feet are killing me, that's all. Well, take off your shoes, sonny boy. Oh, that's a great idea, that is. Ouch! And don't call me sonny boy. It isn't fitting for a man in my position. If that's all I ever call your brother, you'll have cause to be thankful. Well, I suppose that's your burlesque background seeping through again. You didn't seem to mind my burlesque background when you needed the longshoreman's vote. Oh, also now I owe my entire career to you. Listen, I started out on my own hook. You mean on my unhook. <laughs> Take it from me, sad eyes. Those longshoremen weren't voting for that crazy speech you gave. Oh, and what were they voting for, may I ask? Well, if you don't already know, I won't disillusion you by telling you. Here's the theater, Miss Anderson. Thank you, Chuck. Are you coming, Grandma? Are you going home and soak your feet? Well, I said I'd see your show, and I will. Oh, you're too good to me, Santa Claus. Now, see here, Sybil. Hey, hello. Hey, hiya, Sybil. I thought I'd just stop by and wish you good luck tonight. Swifty! Swifty, you yeah. old so-and-so. Oh. How you been doing? Oh, fine. I finally sold those high-button shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Sybil, I-, I can't afford to be seen with these shady friends of yours. Okay, mm. put on a disguise. Well, Sybil, you're not back in burlesque, you know. You've got to start acting and thinking like a lady. Oh, come now, Emily. <laughs> Besides, you can't talk to Sybil like that and get away with it You keep out of this if you know what's good for you Now, look, Brain Trust Are you going to get out of here or do I have to call an officer? Call Errol Flynn, call Flash Gordon for all I care Why, you two-bit racketeer it, it burns me up the way you get away with murder Oh, so it burns you up, does it? Okay, brother, you ask for it <clears throat> Well, are you cooled off? No, I'm not Well, then I'll lie here until you are <laughs> Miller, 
This court finds you guilty of disturbing the peace and of willful assault on a public official. Just a minute, Your Honor. Order in the court. Thrifty Miller, you seem to be quite fond of fighting. And our country is in need of fighting men at this time. I will suspend your sentence if you'll offer your services to some branch of the armed forces of our country. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll wait for you, Swifty. Yeah, how about that guy? I mean, that councilman, I mean. Oh, he's not for me, Swifty. Yeah. I was brought up with lugs like you, and uh, that's the kind I belong with. Me a lug? Me, what used to be the biggest racketeer in town? Shut up, you lug. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to ask you two to show a little more respect for this court. What you're doing now might better be done in some more secluded place. <laughs> That's how a pair of tight shoes got me into this man's army. Yep, All right, go. men, on your feet. We got ten miles to march up today. She must have been a pretty swell dame, Swifty. Oh, she was one of the best. All in, men. Uh, whatever happened to the shoe salesman? You mean the councilman? Yeah. You see that guy giving out the orders? Oh, the captain? Yeah. Wouldn't you know he had a reserve commission from college? Wouldn't you know it? <laughs> Oh, what about the dame? Where's she now? Oh, she always had a spot in her heart for lugs. She's still waiting. No, huh? she and Butch got married. Already they got a couple of little rackets. <laughs> oh, so she got married and you joined the army. Yep, she do it. <laughs> now the Japs is going to get a whipping. <laughs> Skelton, Lucille Ball, and George Tobias for 30 minutes of slap-happy fun. And thanks, Oscar Bradley, for a fine score. You know, ladies and gentlemen, the money these stars would ordinarily receive, the Gulf Oil Company donates instead to the Motion Picture Relief Fund. The fund uses this money to help the less fortunate members of the picture industry. And now, ladies and gentlemen, next week's show. <laughs> Eddie Davis. Conrad Veidt. Warren William. And Osa Masson. In Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's smash success, A Woman's Face. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, next week on your Gulf Screen Guild Theater, we present a superb cast in the story of a woman who committed murder to save a life. You won't want to miss Betty Davis, Osa Masson, Warren William, and Conrad Veidt in A Woman's Face. And so until next Sunday at this same time, this is Roger Pryor saying good night, everyone. Today, any American in any part of the nation can strike against the enemy thousands of miles away. You can do it by buying the United States savings bonds and stamps that provide the tanks, planes, ships, and guns our fighting men must have. So with every cent and dollar you can spare, buy United States savings bonds and stamps. Red Skelton can soon be seen in Metro Goldwyn Mayer's Ship Ahoy, Lucille Ball in RKO's Little Pinks, and George Tobias in Juke Girl, a Warner Brothers picture. Don't forget to tune in next week when we present Betty Davis, Conrad Veidt, Warren William, and Osa Masson in A Woman's Face. But he's been speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.